All right, so the rando trolls are out and about in abundance on social media platforms promoting the idea that Donald Trump is responsible for people trying to kill him. That Donald Trump is the threat to democracy. An example of that is all of the leftists listening to leftist rhetoric are responding to said leftist rhetoric, these maniacal evil human beings, by attempting to blow somebody's head off. But for that reason, we blame Trump. So it's Trump's fault. You understand how that logic could be applied to anything? Anything. Give me a situation and I can explain to you how it's Trump's fault. I'm going to put KGB on the spot here. KGB, you just, I'll talk to Linda while I talk to Linda. And by the way, you can call us up 615-737-9986. 615-737-9986. Also, the Members Nutrition Super Talk text line is up and running. Give me any situation or multiple situations. I'll tell you how it's Trump's fault. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. Challenge accepted. Okay. So just, uh, I'll talk to Linda and then you do that. Linda's on the line right now on the Murphy Show. Hello, Miss Linda. How are you? I am doing great. Thanks for taking my call. Of course. I've been listening all morning, and I just have three things I want to say. Number one, I would like to put a Trump sign in my yard, but I'm afraid to do so because I think people would go crazy. Um, when I see Harris Wall signs, I just think, idiot, but I don't think about, you know, going in and taking it out, throwing it away or anything. That's number one. Number two, somebody called earlier and was talking about, well, how do you know Trump was even there in, you know, at Mar-a-Lago? Well, I used to live in Palm Beach County. If you drive by the airport, you can see his airplane. We used to see it all the time, and it was really cool to see it, but pretty obvious. And then the third thing, somebody had mentioned he could, somebody could call the pro shop and say, well, when is Donald Trump going to tee off? And that way they would know and they'd have this information. And I don't think you could probably do that. I would be highly irresponsible for the pro shop to share any information about his agenda for the day. That's all. No, when it's um, and thank you, Miss Linda, for the call. It's it turns out that uh, right. I, I need to lean on lean, lean on Ken Weaver for a moment. Is Weaver back in the newsroom there? Malinoff? Yeah, yeah. I'm here, Brother Murphy. Uh, uh, how am I? Pronoun- We're going Ruth. Is that right? For the last name of the uh, accused assailant? You that's Ruth? what I'm hearing. I'm hearing okay. Ruth. Uh, that's what I thought. Ryan Ruth uh, is the assailant. Thank you, Ken Weaver. 58-year-old alleged a would-be uh, Donald Trump assassin, Ryan Ruth, uh, apparently lay in wait for some 12 hours in what is being described as something of a sniper's nest. What he did, uh, there is an area, and I've been to West Palm Beach, but not in many a year. And I certainly have never played golf at Trump uh, International. And I have, uh, and I, I would love to, but one way or the other. So I don't know the area as well as some commentators who have spoken on this. But it is well known amongst media circles. Donald Trump plays there a lot. Obviously, it's got his name on the place, right? So Donald Trump's going to be playing golf at that location. If he's home in Mar-a-Lago, he's playing golf at his Trump facility. So it's well known that he plays on a fair amount with fair regularity over the weekends. It is also very well known amongst photographic circles, media circles, that there are a couple of areas on the course that if you know where to go and what woods to walk into, that you can get to a short chain link fence and you can observe. The places where they show long-range photographs with telescopic lens of the photograph on nightly news when Donald Trump's out playing golf with various celebrities or whatnot, whether it be Tiger Woods or whomever, that's where they go, where this guy was. It's fairly well known within media circles where to go and what to do to get the shot, the photographic shot. So it is not contrary to common sense that we would know, I mean, that this guy could figure out where to go if he wanted to do this and where to lie in wait. Now, how did he know that Trump would be there that day? I don't know that he did. I don't know that he didn't. It remains to be seen. For those of us who are more, I don't even want to say conspiratorial. What's a good word to put it? If you... Well, maybe conspiratorial is the best word because a conspiracy by definition is an action amongst more than one individual to accomplish 
a goal, oftentimes a nefarious, dastardly, or evil goal, but a goal nonetheless. So for those of you who are more conspiratorial minded, and I'm not using, once again, not using that word as a pejorative, just saying, if you believe that more people were involved, then obviously this guy might have had an inside track as to when Donald Trump would be playing golf. If that were the case, I don't know why he would have posted up there some 12 hours prior to being interceded by the Secret Service. But Ryan Wesley Ruth, the 58-year-old alleged would-be Trump assassin, uh, was charged previously with a felony in possession of a firearm in federal court. Well, actually, I'm sorry. This is the recent charge that um, was made against him today. He was charged as a felon in possession of a firearm just hours after he was arrested in Florida yesterday. According to ABC 11, prosecutors levied two charges against him, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and possession of a firearm with an obliterated serial number. So he destroyed the serial number on the gun, obviously anticipating leaving the gun in the aftermath of achieving his dastardly deed. The felony stems from an incident in which Ruth allegedly barricaded himself and had a standoff with police in 2002. That, according to the Greensboro News and Record, noting that once the standoff ended, Ruth was arrested and charged with carrying a concealed weapon in possession of a weapon of mass destruction, referring to a fully automatic machine gun. But remember, as Lester Holt told us, this is all Donald Trump's fault. After all, it was Donald Trump engaging in wild rhetoric regarding dog and or cat eating. Unproven false claims, they say. False claims. Anyone saying that it's false, what do you make of the evidence that's been presented to you? I don't want to get off on a tangent here regarding pet eating or dog or cat eating, but they're, le- by the way, they're leaning on that word pet real hard. And here's why. Every media outlet, this is the way that the media plays around with the language and the narrative. And it's sickening because I know exactly what they're doing. So when you see CNN run a crawl that says false claims of pet eating, or when you see ABC, CBS, NBC talk about false claims of pet eating, they want to diminish the idea. They don't want to talk about the real deal, and that is that there are some 20,000 Haitian residents in Springfield, Ohio, that ought not to be there. Secondarily, they don't want to tell you about the animal eating that apparently is going on, and there's evidence of some of that happening. What we don't necessarily have direct evidence of right now is that mom or dad lost Fluffy or Fifi to an illegal Haitian migrant. And so they're using the word pet for a reason. Because they know very well if they used the word animal, then they would have a problem because there's evidence that there have been dogs and cats eaten in and around that area of Ohio. There is no evidence thus far that someone's beloved pet was eaten, but that doesn't mean that it happened. It doesn't mean that it didn't happen. But it's these subtle shifts in the narrative that the media relies on to create the falsehood so that they can, and they do it all. They bend over backwards to call Donald Trump a liar. This is what they're doing. 615-737-9986. Now, for you, KGB, I'm telling you, all of this is Donald Trump's fault, as illustrated by Lester Holt. I had the clip earlier. I had the clip up earlier, and I can uh, share the clip with you, where uh, Lester Holt says, I mean, that it's, well, let's do this one first before you go, KGB. This was yesterday at a uh, at a press conference where we were being told by uh, authorities in West Palm Beach that they just uh, they just don't have the ability to protect him. At this level that he is at right now, he's not the city president. If he was, we would have had this higher golf course around it. Well, because he's not, the security is limited to the areas that the Secret Service deems possible. So is he saying that they just don't have an ability to protect Donald Trump? Yeah, he's on his own. You know, so here's where reality needs to hit these people right across the forehead. 
that y- you can try to parse your words and say, well, he's not the sitting president, therefore he doesn't enjoy. And I understand that a candidate for president doesn't necessarily enjoy the same type of security detail that the sitting president of the United States of America does. No one is suggesting that those two things should be equitable. I would say this, however, he is one of two candidates for president of the United States of America. Secondarily, he is a former president of the United States of America. Thirdly, and most importantly, especially for you liberals listening to me right now, if you have an understanding of what would unfortunately, tragically happen, should Donald Trump be killed in this country, Even if you hate him, maybe you have so much evil and hatred in your own heart that you don't care. And I spoke to and engaged with plenty of you over the weekend that just don't seem to care that someone tried to kill another human being. Do you care about this country? Do you care about what would happen in the aftermath of a Trump assassination? Can you wrap your head around what would happen? Because I feel like if you could, and if you're a sane human being, that in and of itself would demand that this dude talking to us yesterday afternoon get his head out of his butt and provide more security for the former president of the United States of America. You can hate him all day long and twice on Sunday and still recognize how that would shake the very foundations of this United States of America. That's what political assassinations tend to do. Now, KGB, just go ahead, throw something out there. It's always Donald Trump's fault. It's always Donald Trump's fault. Give me, give me a situation and I'll tell you how it's Trump's fault. I got two big ones. Okay. California homelessness. Mm -hmm. The issue there. How is that Trump's fault? Okay. You obviously don't understand that during Trump's first administration, KGB, um, he initiated tax cuts. Okay, these huge tax cuts for the millionaires and billionaires and what these millionaires and billionaires did with their additional money. They're hoarding the money, especially out there in California. They're not sharing that money around. They're not spreading that money around. And they get into their billion dollar you know, mansions and they, you know, a multi-million dollar mansions and they count their money and they dive into the di- off the diving board into that, into that pool of gold bullion like Scrooge McDuck used to do on DuckTales, which you probably are very familiar with. I mean, these rich millionaires and billionaires are hoarding all of the money. Obviously, people can't get a fair shake in California because the millionaires and the billionaires have all the money. Thank you to Donald J. Trump. He's holding all these people back. Secondarily, Donald Trump encouraged businesses to leave California. What do you think that's going to do to the homeless population? It's going to exacerbate it, obviously. They're, they're charging exorbitant prices for the housing that ought to be a human right. Donald Trump doesn't think housing is a human right, KGB. This is an easy one that you just threw at me. Because if Donald Trump understood that housing was a human right, he would rehouse these dehoused people. Thank you. So it's not because of the highest taxes probably in the entire country and also because of the lackluster laws that they're trying to basically make go away of just how... That happens. I just told you it was about tax cuts, KGB. Come on. So it's not the increased taxes, it's the tax cuts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. I have one more, but we have to go to break. You want okay. me to say that? Let's do it on back? the other side. Let's that do it on sense. the other side. I used to play this game uh, called, um, it, I did it on April Fool's Day. Uh, I called it Bizarro Murphy, where if you call me, because I get accused of arguing, I know this is going to surprise everybody. I get accused of arguing with people a lot. I get accused of thinking I'm always right. And so I would do these things. Maybe we should bring this back on some particular Friday or whatever where we present a Bizarro Murphy show where I will, you take up any position on any issue you want and I'll argue the other position. So whatever position you want to take on any issue, you force me to argue the opposite position. Like, you know, well, you can think of the example like, uh, hey, Murphy, I believe in the Second Amendment and I think we ought to be able to keep and hold our guns. And then I'll argue that 
you know, guns are about militias and all of that. It's a fun show. We might not want to do it today because we've got so much going on. It's 1252 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.